interesting. Um, can I ask everybody to uh, give me a smiley face or a little tick to indicate that uh, they've, um, they, they can hear, they don't mind that we wait for a couple of minutes. And uh, if you can see the screen, at the, normally on the left-hand side of the screen, there's an option to show smiley faces or type them in. Yeah, excellent. In just a minute, I'll do a, a brief walkthrough of some of the features of the environment. Some of you may be very familiar with the use of uh, collaborate or illuminate as came before or other, um, other audio graphic environments like Adobe Connect and uh, similar. So, but some of you may be using this kind of environment for the first time. Is there anybody here using this kind of environment for the first time? Claire, yes. Uh, John, that must be PWO. Um, Anna's using it for the first time. Uh, excellent. You're all doing extremely well for using it at the first time because they, they can be quite a challenge. Um, yeah, really um, impressive that you've found how to use the chat and how to use the smiley faces and so on. Okay. One of the sort of issues is that you sometimes don't know whether there's lots of people who are desperately trying to get into the room and somehow it hasn't worked. Um, So I was just having a quick look at my email to see if there were any last minute email messages from people desperately saying, I can't get into the room, I can't get into the room, help. Um, Liz, have you seen any messages coming um, saying help? No, I haven't. And I'm just going in to check in the Moodle and to check on Twitter to see if there's any there, but I haven't seen any yet. I'll get back to you if I do. Okay. Uh, Paula got lost in a couple of rooms. Yeah, Paula, I, I keep I, I keep popping into the room at odd hours, and I find your identity is in the room. It's great. Um, Sylvia is watching Twitter. Uh, Marion's checking email. Um, I think we should probably make a gentle start now, so that we don't end up uh, running running way past time. Um, I'd like to first of all say thank you very much to Sylvia Curry and the Scope community for letting us use the Collaborate environment. An extremely generous and, uh, and, and encouraging from an open academic practice sense uh, and open academic ethos. And it's been really, really great working with you, Sylvia. So thanks again. Um, I'll also call attention to the, um, the little note that I put on the, the front here which is to say, please use headphones or headsets. At the moment, I don't hear any echo in the system. So I think that's quite encouraging. Uh, anybody that has external speakers and also turns their microphone on can cause, uh, can cause quite annoying feedback. So please do make sure you use headphones. Um, so welcome to First Steps in Learning and Teaching in Higher Education. Um, I did put up a suggestion that we might spend time settling in. Um, and there is a guide to collaborate. I trust that many of you have seen that already. Uh, we'll do a quick walk through the Collaborate interface. Then I'll hand over the microphone to Rona Sharp, the head of OCSLD, the Oxford Center for Staff and Learning Development. Um, uh, with whom I sort of had the first conversations about conceiving this course. Um, I'll then do a little introduction to the overall course itself. Um, hand over to Marion for
for a brief piece on reflective practice, and then come back to spend the sort of the, the largest chunk of this session thinking about issues around open academic practice, open academic practice, which will be a sort of a theme that threads right the way through the the whole of first steps in learning and teaching massive open online course. And then we'll have about 15 minutes uh, at the end to take sort of general questions of any sort that you might have. Um, we'll try between myself, Liz, Marion, and Sylvia to monitor the chat, to monitor the Twitter streams, to monitor the uh, email and audio. If you do have questions and uh, we seem to be ignoring you, please don't be afraid to shout on any open channel you can find. Um, and then for the last 15 minutes, we'll introduce the other collaborate rooms because Sylvia has very generously set us up with, um, with three rooms. There's this main room. Uh, that's a thought. Liz, sorry, excuse me, just thinking about the other room. Is it worth having a quick look in the open room just to make sure that nobody has logged in to somewhere else and is wondering where the heck the rest of us are? Um, I did some editing on the WordPress to sort of deprecate the uh, access to the open room. What do you think? I'll go and have a look. OK. Uh, thanks, Liz. I, I, I don't expect that there's anybody there, but uh, I know sometimes when we've had sandbox rooms and the main room, people have been uh, a little bit uh, so Ben says, yes, I was visiting it a moment ago and there was a Catherine in there. Yeah. Yeah, I, yes, Sylvia, the open room was listed first, but I, and I saw that and I changed it because I, I just sort of, oh my god, everybody's going to go into the, into one room and not the other. <laughs> okay. Um, so we'll finish off with a, with a little trip to, to the other rooms. Um, so, that's what I'm planning to do for now. I hope that's okay with everybody. Uh, if you have any general questions, please do type them into the chat screen and we'll get started. So I wanted to just briefly walk through the Collaborate. <laughs> I see somebody's doing a MOOC webinar juggling wires in a small camper van next to the sea in County Donegal. I'm not the slightest bit envious. Um, so we have posted a um, guide to the use of Collaborate that just NetSkills produced. Um, we had some input to the, the writing of that based on the work that we've done in several of the uh, just funded uh, users in innovation and institutional innovation programs where we made extensive use of, a, of an Illuminate environment. So thank you to NetSkills for the uh, quick guide to Blackboard Collaborate. Um, the main thing here is to talk about meeting etiquette um, and hopefully everybody is at this point hearing me well enough. Um, Yeah, uh, Rona will make you a moderator in just a minute. Um, meeting etiquette. Uh, I'll talk about chatting. I'll talk about raising hands. Talk about using the microphone. And if you have any technical problems during the session, if you send a message to Liz Lovegrove, that's probably the the best way of of uh, trying to get it sorted out. Liz is our learning technologist and is helping with uh, with the platform. Um, So I just wanted to call attention to a few user tools. You will have noticed, I hope, um, in the probably, unless you've moved it, it will be on the upper left-hand side of your screen. There will be a talk button. Um, and below the talk button, there will be a list of participants. And whoever the speaking participant is will have their name at the top of the screen. I'm speaking, so my name is at the top of the screen at the moment. Um, 
And below the name of the speaker, you will see four little icons. The left-hand most icon gives you an opportunity to drop down and put in several uh, emoticons. So if, can I just ask everybody to give us a smiley face if you see the emoticons there. Excellent. So smiley face is appearing. Alan Quartz is laughing out loud. Um, you can even, if you get tired of me, you can signal your disapproval by giving it a, giving it a thumbs down. Oh, that's enough of that. Or you can express confusion. Um, you can ask people to go faster or slower, or you can clear them. Um, the next symbol to the right is an indication that you are away from the room. In fact, as far as I can tell, it's only a courtesy to say that you are away. So Sylvia just stepped away and she came back. Uh, in fact, I think I delivered one whole session with <laughs> the indicator on that I was away from the room although uh, I was speaking and participating. Um, the next symbol, the little, the little hand, is how you ask attention to speak. So if you click on the little hand, excellent, thank you very much. Um, so I'm not going to hand over the microphone to everybody at the moment. Um, what that has indicated is that you do indeed uh, know how to um, ask to ask to speak. So if I can ask everybody now to click that again and put their hands back down. Thank you. Excellent. Very. Um, uh, Anna and Sylvia. Sylvia, do you act, do you genuinely want to speak? Oh, sorry. I'm just, just having mouse <laughs> problems. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, uh, so just uh, putting the hand down. And the final button that I wanted to call your attention to is the little polling button. At the moment, it's set to tick yes and tick no. So if everybody can tick yes, everybody ticks yes. Um, and then if you click it again, um, it'll give you an option to tick none. And you can do yes, no. And, and we can change the the kind of polls that are available, but uh, we're not going to be using any complicated polling in this particular session, but you can set up multiple choice questions and uh, various other ways of asking the audience and getting a sense of the audience's feel. Um, out of the room polling, clicking to talk. Um, we have set, this, uh, set the system up to allow up to four people to speak simultaneously. Uh, however, it's probably not good practice for everybody, for four people to keep their microphones open at all times. If you uh, do want to speak, raise your hand. Um, we'll then um, invite you to speak. If your hand has been raised for a long time and I haven't noticed it, feel free to grab the microphone and shout. Uh, but when you finish speaking, remember to turn the microphone off. And I think the last thing I want to mention now is that we are recording this session. And we're going to be recording all of the sessions. And they will be made in practice publicly available. Well, in principle, they're publicly available. They'll be on the internet. The links will only be posted through the FSLT12 site. If anybody has issues with their presence being, um, uh, as it were, uh, recorded in this way, uh, would you, could you please let us know, although we do hope that people don't mind the recording. Lots of people have said they aren't able to be here and will, uh, would like to have the recording available. Um, the text chat, if you see the, the text chat at the, somewhere at the bottom of your screen, I've moved mine uh, over a little bit to give, my, to give me more sight of the participants. The text chat is only semi-private. Moderators can see all text chat, even private messages. So um, if, you, if I call your attention to the list of participants, and I'm going to take the camera off of me, and I'm going to point the camera at the screen for a minute. 
Um, now we have a list of participants and to the in the right hand edge of the list of participants you'll see a little drop down menu option and that little drop down menu option will allow you to send a private chat to somebody so you can send private chats to people without them going to the whole public room. However, moderators will see that chat. So if you want to say uh, something rude about one of the moderators, uh, be advised that the moderators will know what you have said. Um, the chat will be excerpted and published as a um, RTF file. The published RTF file will only show the public chat. It won't show the private chat. Uh, but as I say, moderators will be able to see that. And at the end of the session, be sure you actually exit the session. If you don't exit the session, the recording won't be saved until everybody has exited the room. So at the end of the session, I'm going to just make sure that everybody has has left and in, 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 filed out in an orderly fashion so that we can capture the recording and save it for other people to, uh, to watch, those who aren't here. OK, um, are there any questions at this point about the Collaborate platform, or shall we move on? I think we'll move on. Uh, 